Which gray, black, and brown Copic markers are best for beginners? If you're new to markers and have no idea which colors to buy first, ugh, the internet is full of beginner recommendations and starter lists. But if you don't know anything about markers, then you probably also don't know how to tell a good starter list from a bad starter list. And whew, I've seen some bad ones out there. Today, let's talk about the neutral marker families. I'll tell you which colors I recommend for beginners and why. The why is really important because Copics are not cheap. If I'm asking you to spend money on a specific color, I want you to know why. I've also got some amazing money saving tips for you and a few freebies. Before we get into the recommendations, you should know that today's video is part of a series. Each video breaks the rainbow of markers down into bite-sized color groups. Don't worry, you don't have to watch them in order. Finish this video and links to the others are down in the description. But if this is the first one you're watching, I always start with a beginner warning about the boxed sets. I do not recommend these large sets for beginners. And I'm pretty sure if you ask the folks at Copic, if they were honest, they probably don't recommend box sets for beginners either. The boxes make much more sense for experienced Copic artists and art studios who are building a full collection fast. There's no discount on the boxed sets, so there's no financial benefits to buying a box. In fact, there's a major disincentive because boxes are color samplers. Boxes do not contain blending combinations, so you'll be forced to run out and buy more markers to blend with the markers that are in your box. I learned this lesson the hard way, and I don't want you to make the same mistake. It's much better to purchase your markers open stock or in small blending combination packs so that all of your markers have a couple of friends that they can blend with. Aside from the box sets, the other thing I want to warn you about are the Copic starter lists that are floating around out there on the internet. See, around 2015, adult coloring got really trendy, and for a while there, Copic was the hot, hot, hot new product for crafters. Never mind that Copics had been used by artists around the world for decades. Suddenly, nurses, attorneys, and third grade teachers were offering Copic advice in blogs and videos. A lot of the lists that are online now, they go back to those days when the average Copic expert was just someone who messed around with markers on the weekends. And their beginner lists are really nothing more than the markers they like best. I can't tell you how common it was for a marker blogger to release their best ever list one week and then two weeks later show you their gigantic Copic marker haul. Wait a minute, how can you recommend the best of the best Copics if you have never used all the Copics? When information is scarce, you really have to pay attention to who you call an expert. <sighs> I'm a professional illustrator, and I've been teaching beginner marker classes since 2014. I look at some of these lists, and there's no way that I would teach a beginner class with these colors. Why not? Well, in markers, and this is true for every brand of alcohol marker, some marker colors stain more than others. A staining marker is a color that grabs onto paper fibers, and it really doesn't want to blend. Now, Copic has fewer staining colors than the other brands. That's one reason they cost more, because they have very high ink standards. But even with Copic and all my years of experience, some staining colors still cause me problems. They make us work harder to smooth the blend. So there's no way I would recommend a bunch of staining colors to beginners. This is also why I don't recommend other brands of markers for beginners. Heck, the brand that's likely advertising on my video here is mostly staining colors. This company has single-handedly lowered the bar for what smooth blending is supposed to look like. They don't blend well, but that's a rant for another day. A good starter marker list, though, it avoids the staining markers as much as possible. 
My browns and grays today are all easy blending colors because I want you to succeed. A good starter list also avoids unstable colors. Some marker colors are made by mixing several inks. And again, the cheaper the marker, the more ink colors they toss into that mixture. That ain't good. Unstable markers can leave funky colors on your paper. Like you'll be blending two browns and suddenly you'll see gray around the edges. That's the ink blend coming apart and separating. It's kind of like Italian salad dressing. The mixture doesn't stay mixed for very long. And it doesn't have to be on paper. The cheapest markers, the reason they don't offer refills is because that weird gray, it can separate inside the marker or inside the refill bottle. They're unstable. My beginner browns and grays today are all stable colors which do not go funky on the paper and they won't separate in the bottle. Usefulness is my third factor. Copics are expensive, and I know some of you are starting from nothing. I want every starter marker to be a color that you'll use for a lifetime. Copic makes a lot of brown and gray markers, and you don't need them all. Heck, I don't need them all. If you only color flowers and food, you probably don't need gray markers, especially in the beginning. I don't want you to waste money on markers that you'll hardly ever use. Okay, so let's start with black, and here's where I can save you eight or even $16 without blinking. Copic makes two black markers. This is black 100, and here's special black 110. Which one should you buy first? Whichever one's on sale. Which one should you buy second? You don't. Save the money and go buy a red or a purple instead. You don't need two blacks. I mean, look at them. Can you tell which is which? I know the difference and I still can't tell them apart. Do you really think friends and family are gonna shun you for using the wrong black marker? You don't need both blacks. Actually, you don't really need either black. Do you wanna know what I use black for? Labeling boxes before they go into the attic. I'm serious. I don't use black markers in my art, and I don't call for them in my classes. Here are two projects, and neither one of them uses black. Gray. All grays. Grays don't stain as much as black, and two coats of a level 9 or 10 gray, it looks black anyway. I know, it feels wrong not to own a black marker, but don't waste money on colors you don't need. Okay, let's move to the brown E family now. And here, I need to warn you. I'm not a card maker or a colorist, so I don't color cute little girls, fashion women, or sassy grandmas. I don't do skin and hair tutorials. And when I do color skin, I use lots of weird colors like violet, green, and pink. So if you want skin and hair recipes, I'm so not your girl. I color flowers, food, landscapes, and everyday objects. If I could only use one set of browns for the rest of my life, I would look for a relatively balanced brown. Something that's not too rusty and not too, well, okay, not too ugly. And that's pretty much the same criteria that I would use for beginner browns too. I want your starter ease to work for lots of brown things. So here's the E family. The E-Zeros have a lot of red in them. That red base, it makes them a staining color. The E-Teens are red too, so nope, not a good beginner choice. The E-20s, 30s, and 90s, they're all dirty oranges. I love the 90s, but they're barely brown. I like the 20s, and I like the 30s as brown though. They're stable and easy blenders. The E40s and 50s have yellow undertones, which makes them less versatile. The E70s are brownish purples. They're interesting, but this is a niche brown and you may never need them. 
and the E80s are green flavored. Ooh. So for a beginner list, I'm choosing between the 20s and the 30s. And honestly, both will work. You could go with either set, but I'm giving a slight advantage to the E30s because there's more of them. And I think they're a little bit easier to blend. So for the bare bones beginner set, I would go with E31, 33, 35, 37, and 59. They're made with a single ink. They're not mixtures to make them redder or grayer, so you can blend the heck out of them and they won't separate. They're just a nice standard brown. They'll work for animals or trees or a loaf of bread. Now let's go back a second to my recommended brown group. Why did I knock E39 off the list and replace it with E59? Because E39 isn't as dark as you think, and they don't make an E39.9999999. E59 is just as stable. It's just as universal, and it blends with E37. I also use a lot of beige, and the two that I use the most are E50 and E21, both of which can coincidentally also be used to color Caucasian skin. But again, I don't color skin very often. E50, E21, the E30s, and then E59. I teach with these browns all the time. They work for me, they work for my students, and they'll work for you too. Now let's talk gray. And here's where the Amy of today would argue with the Amy of 10 years ago. I used to recommend gray markers to all my students. And while it's nice to have gray markers for the occasional gray objects, my reasoning is that grays can be used to darken other markers that you already own, like if you're missing the next darkest marker. So here, I'm using grays to make Copics look one shade darker. But honestly, this is a total artist move. It's one of the reasons most professional artists will insist that grays are super duper important. We don't use grays for coloring elephants. We use grays to do artsy things. So nowadays, even though I still totally think that a set of grays saves you money in the long run, I'm not so sure that buying grays is really great beginner advice. Because frankly, most beginners aren't ready to do this. And some of you may even be seeing this move for the first time. So while I think everyone needs a set of grays before you get to the intermediate level, I'm not so sure you need gray in the first few months of markering. I mean, maybe if you color a lot of astronaut sharks? I just think there are other colors you need more when you're first starting out. And I know this is gonna anger some artist friends because we all use the heck out of our gray markers. Like I personally couldn't live without my grays. But again, my list is for beginners and hobbyists. The average beginner just isn't going to be coloring a lot of grayscale value studies on day four or even 104. Get more browns, get more greens. But let's say you do color a lot of Christmas possums. You want gray markers and you want them now. So which should you get? Okay, so Copic grays run from warm to cool. Warm grays have a strong yellow tone. They're technically yellow gray. The toner grays are lightly warm. They're almost a red gray. The neutral grays, now these are perfectly balanced. They're a gray gray. They're not too warm and they're not too cool. It's like Goldilocks gray. And then there's the cool gray group. They're blue gray. Now, Amy from 10 years ago used to recommend the N grays. In fact, some of you watching this may already have my old recommendation list, and it says very clearly on it, N neutral gray. And if you have the N grays, that's great. There's no need to run out for more grays anytime soon. The Ns are perfectly fine. But again, today's Amy is having second thoughts. I now recommend the C grays to beginners. Ends are good, but I really think that the C's fit my easy, stable, useful criteria better. First, they don't make any neutral gray chow markers. So for those of you who prefer chow, or maybe you're saving money with chow, you can't even get a neutral. 
but also the C's are easier to blend, so that's really good for beginners. And last, I think the C's are prettier than the N's. The N markers, they're kind of flat and a lifeless gray, while the bluish C's, they just feel more artistic and interesting. Is there a reason why I'm ignoring the W markers? Yeah, because they're ugly. They've got this weird, almost green flavor to them. In fact, in some lighting situations, they do look green. And I understand, lots of animals are warm gray, but between you and me, I'm not really sure that beginners are thinking that deeply about which gray they're using. I just think a beginner wants simple colors and they don't want upchuck gray. So get the C's or maybe the N's. But do you need the whole set? Mmm, you're gonna love me. I'm about to start saving you a ton of money. No matter which grays you get, do not get them all. Unless you do something stupid, like you start testing all the Copic markers for things like cap accuracy, light fastness, and stability, and then you write articles about them, then you might need all the grays. But really, who would do such a dumb thing? The average non-boneheaded kind of person, they're only going to use half the grays. Get all the evens or get all the odds. You don't need both. And that's not just beginner advice. This is advice for the rest of your life. You only need the evens or the odds. C3 is too close in color to C4, so you're never going to blend them together. It's a total waste of time. You also won't use both in the same project. Buy all the even C's, then all the even N's, then all the even W's. There, I just saved you $144. You're welcome. Want to save even more money? These grays here, let's talk about them. From the late 1950s to the early 90s, before Photoshop or computer design programs, Every book, magazine, newspaper, advertisement, comic books, basically everything editorial and anything printed, we used to assemble every single page by hand using a collage method. Headlines, text, line art, photos. It was all printed on separate pieces of paper ahead of time with a photostat machine. The photostat pieces were then cut by hand. The page design was drawn by hand. The collage pieces were then lined up by hand, and it was all pasted to a layout board by hand. The finished board would get photographed with a giant camera system, and then printing companies would print from the negative. Paste-ups were fiddly work. I learned to make the darn things in art school, and like the day after I graduated, Everybody went digital. Anyway, when I tell students that Copics were invented for graphic artists, this is the stuff I mean. It's all about printing. Graphic art. Toner gray Copics were used with photostats. Photostats were printed with toner. We colored on these photostats with illustration markers. We needed specialized grays to match the color of the photostats. That's why they're called toner gray. Now, does this sound like anything that you'll be doing tomorrow? Then you don't need the toners. Ta-da! I just saved you another $87.89. And by the way, what's so special about Special Black? This is Photostat Black. 110 is actually T11. I just saved you another $7.99. Since I just saved you so much money, perhaps I can talk you into my favorite set of grays, which aren't even marked gray. If you like my underpainting methods and you know that this is something you want to learn to do, please consider this four marker set. With these four markers, wait, oh, okay, maybe add B60, but that was already on my list of blues for you. Okay, so with these five markers, you can basically underpaint anything. You don't need them right away, but if you spend enough time in my online classes, you're gonna use these a lot. So here are my beginner recommendations for 
an all-purpose universal brown. Uh, but but black, well, okay, one of them. And gray. Plus a little set of versatile underpaint markers. And remember, I've got a printable starter list waiting for you in my free download library. It's full of exclusive stuff for subscribers to my Saturday newsletter. Subscribe with the link down in the description. Click here if you want to learn more about why e-markers are not really brown. And for my recommended red markers, watch this.